À la claire fontaine m'en allant promener, j'ai trouvé l'eau si belle que je m'y suis baigné. Il y a longtemps que je t'aime, jamais je ne t'oublierai. Sur la plus haute branche, un rossigne chantait. Chante, rossigne, chante, toi qui as le cœur gai. Il y a longtemps que je t'aime, jamais je ne t'oublierai. Hi, welcome to episode 40 of The Gentle Knitter. My name is Nicole and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario. Today is Friday, uh, July 16th. I'm actually on my lunch hour and uh, just thought I would take the opportunity to sit down and catch up with you. It's been several weeks since I've last recorded and I have lots of really uh, fun knitting to share with you. I hope that you are well. Everything here is really, really good. Um, I just received my second dose of the COVID vaccine. And uh, so that's incredibly exciting. Um, the rates here are, are quite low now. We are out, out of quarantine. It was a very long, mostly quarantined winter and spring, but uh, now we are finally, things are reopening and uh, it's, uh, it's really, really exciting. Um, in a couple of weeks, I will actually be traveling to visit my parents and my sister. They live in New Brunswick and um, so I'm really so, so excited to to travel, to go to the ocean, to see my family and, and actually touch them and hug them and, and uh, sit down and share meals and knit with my mom. And I don't know, it's, it's just going to be so, so lovely to be somewhere else than my house. <laughs> Although I love my house and I've been incredibly lucky throughout this whole pandemic to have a place that I feel happy and, and uh, safe in. Um, it, uh, it, but it is really exciting. The idea of being able to travel and visit my family is gonna be just such an incredible gift. And uh, hopefully I'll be doing some other trips relatively soon. Um, if the, uh, if the border can open, I would like to go visit my friend Sarah in Maine, Sarah Fibertrek, and, uh, and, uh, of course there's Rhinebeck coming up this fall and fingers crossed the, uh, the border will be open by then. I, I certainly hope. And if the situation continues to improve in, uh, in New York state, then um, I hope that I will get a chance to see you there. I certainly have plans on going. So, uh, so if uh, the situation continues to go the way it's going, uh, we will be able to see each other on the hill and that will be uh, another really wonderful and exciting thing to look forward to. But for today, I have uh, quite a lot of knitting to catch up with you on. And first things first, as you can see, I am wearing my Yell cardigan. And uh, what a pleasure it is to be able to wear it. Although today is a little warm for a, <laughs> for a full on uh, color work uh, Shetland wool cardigan, but I will at least uh, have it on me for a little bit so I can talk about it. Uh, yeah, this this beautiful design is uh, a cardigan uh, designed by Marie Wallen, and it's part of a collection of patterns called Shetland. 
So all of the patterns are uh, named after places in Shetland. And for those of you who don't know, I traveled to Shetland some, I think it might have been in 2011 or 2014. I, I don't remember now. It's It's been a while, but um, just absolutely fell in love with the place. I've always loved uh, Shetland uh, knitting traditions and, uh, and uh, have knit quite a lot of uh, different feral garments, but this one is probably sort of my my biggest achievement, if you will. Uh, I'll stand up so I can show it to you. So here it is. Um, I don't have a lot of room in this in this room, but uh, at least I can show you a bit of a close up of the uh, the main the main color work here. So the sweater itself, um, the, the design has a very different set of colors. It is uh, done in more jewel tones. It's very, very beautiful design. Marie Wallen is such a wonderful um, colorist, but I wanted something a little softer. And uh, I've been working on this for a while now. I actually did quite a lot of swatching for it. Um, actually, there's a swatch of it here. This is sort of, this swatch ended up being fairly close to what I ended up doing, but I did do some swatches with some brighter, more jewel tones. And uh, actually, I have them right over there. Let me see if I can show you. So yeah, I had done quite a bit of swatching for uh, this uh, sweater, um, playing with different uh, body color combinations and uh, um, different sort of the, the main color work. And um, even though, I mean, I really love the results I got on these, um, these swatches. I really wanted something softer and you know the thing you do um, you do compromise a little bit when you do softer colors that are closer in sort of in their family is that the pattern is maybe not as crisp and as easy to see things kind of get a little bit muddy but honestly I like that effect I feel like it looks sort of sun bleached, it looks faded, it looks like an old fabric that's maybe spent a little too much time in the sun. And um, that's kind of the uh, effect that I was going for. So I am, I like I said, I'm thrilled with the results. It's going to be a very, very wearable piece. And I that's the other thing with a very colorful Fair Isle. I feel like, um, it's something that really stands out when you wear it and is maybe not as sort of um, easy to wear in an everyday way. I feel like this sweater is something I can throw on almost anything in my wardrobe and it would go. And so um, so for that, I, I'm really thrilled with the results. So um, some of the details, so I knit the sweater in uh, a combination of Jameson's and Jameson and Smith, their, their jumper weight, which is, you know, more or less a fingering weight yarn in 100% Shetland wool. And uh, I think most of my colors are Jameson's. I also have maybe one or two colors. I think I have one color that is some very old Rowan um, Scottish tweed. If you go to my Ravelry page uh, for the my project page for my yell, I have listed all the colors that I use there. If you can't access Ravelry, I know that not everybody can use Ravelry, unfortunately, because of uh, problems with their design triggering um, triggering different uh, vision problems and and so on. Please uh, leave me a comment and let me know if you want me to send you the list of the colors that I've used, I'd be happy to do that. So you can message me either in a comment below 
or uh, you can message me on Instagram and uh, I'll be happy to uh, fill you in on, on what it is that I used for, for my sweater. Um, I made some modifications and um, so the probably the biggest one is that I omitted, uh, there's a color work band that the original uh, incorporates. So the, the front bands here are actually uh, also color work and I think they're knit sideways. And it's a very beautiful, like sort of, it has feral patterning with multicolors running uh, all around the, the front band. Uh, I decided to omit this design feature for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, the way the sweater sits on the body, it actually really hugs the neck, which I really like. I've talked about this before. Um, I like a sweater that sort of covers the back of my of my neck and kind of comes up a tiny bit. Uh, it feels really cozy. However, um, had I done the band the way it was designed, it actually would have sat really high on my neck and that I might not have liked as much. One of the reasons why it would sit so high on my body is that I ended up um, knitting this uh, much smaller than the uh, the original. So I knit the smallest size, which uh, the extra small, uh, even though I'm not an extra small, but I wanted the fit to be uh, relatively close to, to the body. I wanted sort of more of like a small jacket that would um, I just really like that silhouette. Um, I wear a lot of dresses that have a full skirt. So I like sort of um, the look of a, um, a sort of more fitted top and then having the voluminous skirts uh, below. And um, so, like I said, the sweater itself um, sits a lot tighter on my body. It doesn't have, I wouldn't say it has negative ease, like there's still, there's still some positive ease but um it's not um uh, it's not as um as boxy as the original design and i think with a boxier version it sits a little bit further back so there is room for that uh that front band but in my case i knew it was going to kind of really hug my shoulders and uh so that was uh the main reason why i removed the uh, the color work band, but also uh, honestly, I felt like for my version of it, because it has this kind of very subtle um, color story, um, I really liked just the the very uh, plain look of having the band, you know, the bottom band and the the front bands be and the the sleeves be the same. I just felt it was, it is a little less um, fussy and a little more everyday looking, if you will. Um, also, because I really love moss stitch, and so it was nice to bring the moss stitch uh, to the front of the sweater. Again, kind of like as a unifying uh, design feature. The other thing, uh, the other modification I made was that I um, I made the bottom band wider than the design calls for. So in the original, the bottom band is in moss stitch, but it's very, very narrow. And I actually really love the way that looks. However, I noticed on people's project pages that this tended to curl up and uh, I really didn't want that. So what I ended up doing, I wasn't quite sure how to address the bottom band to make it uh, thicker, to do ribbing. Um, so what I ended up doing is I did a provisional cast on. So this sweater is knit uh, bottom up. It's knit in the round and then it's uh, steeped open. So you actually cut it open um, to make it into a cardigan. And so I did the provisional cast on, I knit the whole sweater. I actually like finished pretty much everything. And uh, then I picked up 
the I undid my provisional cast on and knit the bottom border down and uh, I figured if if whatever I choose doesn't work out I can rip it out again and, and do something else the problem is when you start with a ribbing um, you know if it doesn't work out and it's much harder to uh, to remove it and do something else so um, so I did it that way and it turned out it worked really beautifully um, so what else can I say about it I, I did some uh, little finishing inside for my steak so the uh, the raw edges of the steak where you cut to open it I covered with some just some simple uh, bias tape that I bought that just kind of simple I actually really like it when um, I've done in the past I've used like decorative ribbon but I didn't have anything that really matched the colors and and I think this is kind of nice and in, in just how tidy and, and subtle it is so um so I'm happy with my choice and the because it's a bias button it has stretched so it doesn't um it doesn't sort of make the edging uh, rigid it, it kind of has a really nice um nice fluidity but uh I think that's probably it I'm I'm just so happy with the results and uh it now that it's blocked it's it's really really soft and of course quite warm and uh I'm really looking forward to wearing it this uh this winter and I'm also just really chomping at the bit to uh to cast on another <laughs> fair isle sweater I, I really enjoyed working on it and and actually I did order um, some other Marie Wallen books. Um, the Woolly Thistle, which is a shop in the States, a really great uh, wool uh, online shop. And she, uh, Kareen, who's the owner, is, uh, is a great, um, great supplier of uh, British uh, and European wool products and designs. And she was having a sale recently. And so I picked up two of Marie Wallen's publications. I picked up Wildwood and North Sea. And these are both so beautiful and filled with designs that I'm really itching to cast on. So uh, Wildwood, the designs are uh, sort of inspired by um, I think more uh, Baltic or um, Eastern European uh, designs and um, yeah Eastern European ornamental folk designs is kind of uh, where she drew her inspiration and uh, there's this beautiful uh, the cover cardigan called the Hawthorn I would really love to uh, to make this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, and I really, really love the original colors that it uh, that it's knit in. This uh, this collection of uh, patterns is using her yarn. Uh, she has a line of yarns called British Breeds, and uh, that yarn looks really gorgeous. I would really love to get my hands on some. It's a little pricey, but. Um, yeah, the, just the colors of that yarn line are just so beautiful, very uh, kind of muted fall colors, which is right up my alley. The uh, There's also this uh, sweet pullover called the Holly pullover that is uh, really lovely. The sweater that really caught my eye and made me buy this collection is called the chestnut cardigan let me find it here this cardigan here i'll get a, a, a closer up picture of the uh of the design 
So I absolutely love, love this cardigan. Um, if you follow Knitting Traditions, the uh, uh, the podcast, she actually made uh, made this cardigan. And I think she used the yarn that is called for. And uh, it turned out so, so beautifully. Um, again, I would love to use the yarn, uh, Marie Wallen's yarn. However, I do have tons and tons of Shetland yarn that I could use for my stash. And I would really like to make sort of a, a woody um, version like browns and blues and, and golds. I think uh, that would just be such a lovely addition for the fall. So I definitely have my eye on that design. And uh, yeah, this this is a very beautiful book. I, I like this this design too. It's a little simpler. It's called the Birch Pullover. And uh, it's very, very pretty. So Wildwood is a really, really beautiful collection. Um, the I checked the sizing is fairly inclusive for this one. It's one of her newer books. Not all of her designs, unfortunately, are size inclusive. Uh, some of the older books uh, are less so. Uh, North Sea, I think, is kind of belongs in that category where uh, you know sweater sizes go up to yeah, like. 50 inches inch bust would be like the largest size um, for a lot of these designs. So unfortunately, like I said, not ultra inclusive in terms of sizing for this book. Um, but uh, what I love about this book, it's all <laughs> oceany colors and uh, lots of cabled sweaters. The one that absolutely just caught my eye is um is this sweater here and uh let me find a closer up look so the design is called Aaron, and it's a cabled sweater with uh slightly kind of a dolman sleeve and then a very uh, wide seed stitch border. So of course that really made me love it. And it's it's got that sort of silhouette that I really like. Um, and you can wear it, you know, with a pin or, um, I just, I really, I think this might be my next cast on. It's knit in, um, in Rowan Felta Tweed, which is a yarn that I have quite a bit of it in my stash. And I really, really like that yarn. It's a very beautiful yarn. And just, I mean, just the whole ensemble. <laughs> this is, you know, when I kind of imagine myself, like my dream self, I imagine, you know, having beautiful, long, red, curly hair and, you know, just uh, haunting the cold North Atlantic beaches in a long linen dress, rubber boots, and a hand-knit cabled sweater. That's <laughs> that's fantasy me. Um, but this book is basically, you know, all all that. You know, there's uh, just so many beautiful cabled sweaters. And there's also some really lovely, subtle color work sweaters. So this one is another one that I am completely obsessed with. And it's really very me, I think. It's called the Tyree Pullover. And, you know, very reminiscent of, of this here. So that's definitely another one that's, uh, that's on, my, uh, on my wish list.
Okay, so I changed into a slightly more seasonally appropriate uh, sweater. I'm wearing, a, this is an old, uh, an old cardigan. Uh, I think it's called the Fine Sand Cardigan by Heidi Kiermeyer. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a great throw on in the summer. I made it in linen and uh, um, it's it's much more comfortable <laughs> on a day like today than uh, than the Shetland uh, Fair Isle <laughs> sweater. But uh, speaking of uh, warm woolly sweaters, once I uh, finished my yell, I was really itching to knit another color work um, cardigan. And um, I had been watching the, um, the Camembornia podcast and Sophia had made a sweater called the Lunenberg. And I remembered that I had a kit in my stash for that sweater. And uh, so I, I dug that out and cast on the sweater, the design is uh, is by Amy Christophers of uh, Savory Knitting, and uh, it's a beautiful uh, yoked colorwork sweater. The original pattern is a pullover. However, I am making a steeked cardigan, so you can see the the steek stitches here uh, in the front, and um, it's a, it's such a beautiful yoke patterning. It is reminiscent of uh, Bohus uh, designs, and if you're interested in what Bohus is, check out the latest episode of um, A Fruity Knitting. Um, she, uh, uh, Andrea, interviews um, the woman who is uh, sort of the um, the main designer and purveyor of uh, Bohus um, knitting patterns and yarn and uh, there's a really really interesting story and tradition behind uh, Bohus uh, knitting but this one is not a, officially a Bohus sweater it's just inspired and one of the things that Bohus uh, knitting often has is these uh, pearl stitches integrated into color work and so you get this really lovely kind of mix of uh, of colors because when you work um, when you're changing rows and you're changing colors but you're knitting in uh, you're knitting in purl stitches you see both colors that are being used you can see um, for instance here you can see that there the um, the new stitches are done in this like pale teal but the old the stitches that you're working into are the charcoal gray so you kind of get this sort of double uh, color effect and uh, it's really very very pretty a lot of it adds a lot of texture and so for me this really looks almost like uh, lichen on rock. So you've got the beautiful golden lichen on uh, on a granite, on a big granite rock. <laughs> That's what this uh, this sweater reminds me of. Speaking of uh, lichen on rocks, um, the newest issue or the upcoming fall issue of Pom Pom Magazine is uh, I think the theme of this issue is um, branches and roots, something like that. So it's uh, it's one of their nature themed uh, issues, which I always love. And um, there's a sweater in there called Cladonia and Cladonia is a type of lichen. And uh, it's the kind of lichen that has a little like a gray stem and then a little red cup. Um, kind of looks like a little fairy hat or or a little drinking cup but um, the design itself is very beautiful and uh, I'm definitely going to be picking up uh, a copy of that uh, magazine to uh, to make that sweater but back to this sweater so yeah it's knit in some very beautiful yarn very rustic lichen and lace and um, it is, uh, so this is the yarn. It's the uh, Rustic Heather Sport. And uh, so it's 100% Canadian wool. And um, it, um, 
it's very, like I said, very rustic, very warm. It's a single ply yarn, but it's not, um, it, it's got a lot of stability. It's a, it's a really, really nice yarn. And um, so there's one, two, three, four, there's five colors used. So this beautiful um, stony gray, I think this color is called coal. And I don't have the tags for the other colors, but I'll, I'll uh, try to remember to put them down, uh, down uh, in the description. You've got this lovely sort of neutral, pale, warm gray, a mossy green that's got a lot of yellow undertones. Speaking of yellow, this beautiful golden yellow color. I love this color and I would really love a sweater in this. And then possibly my favorite color, this really lovely pale sort of eau de nil, um, kind of aqua, like a greenish blue color. So yeah, I just really absolutely love the way it's turning out. And I think it's going to be a really wonderful uh, garment for the winter. I've got about half an inch left to do on the bottom ribbing, and then uh, then I'll just have the sleeves and the and uh, the bands, and then I'll be I'll have a nice new sweater for maybe for Rhinebeck. I've got a couple of half finished objects uh, in the form of socks. And uh, so here's the first of my hand spun socks, which is really exciting. I've never knit uh, socks in hand spun before, in my own hand spun. So this yarn, uh, if you watched my last episode, you will have seen me talk about the beautiful bats that were sent to me by Lindsay from Artifacts of Appreciation. And uh, so I, I spun up the bats into some more or less fingering yarn. Not super, super um, accurate when it comes to my spinning, but there's the contrast for the, um, for the heels and toes, and then the main color. And I'm currently working on uh, on my second sock. I'm almost done. I've got the, you know, maybe an inch left on the toe. And ah, I just love these. They're so beautiful. Um, they're very, very soft and but yet very rustic and toothy. And uh, I really love the combination of these soft grays and blues and creams with the darker gray and green sort of toes and heels and um, it feels really satisfying to knit with hand spun I you know I, I don't spin a ton um, and for some reason the yarn that I do end up making, I don't often knit with it. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but uh, this was really satisfying to just kind of get tucked in to the uh, to the fiber, spin it up. Um, I ended up spinning it on a spindle, and uh, and then knitting up the socks. It was really lovely to spend so much time with this beautiful fiber and uh, it's super rewarding. So I think this has definitely inspired me to do more spinning and to sort of spin uh, fiber with, with projects in mind. So I, uh, I definitely want to spin some fiber to make some sweaters. I think that would be really very, very uh, rewarding and uh, just, it would just feel so cozy to have your own hand spun uh, sweater. So 
Uh, thank you, Lindsay, for the beautiful, beautiful fiber and uh, for inspiring me to uh, to be a little more proactive and a little braver with my uh, with my spinning. I forgot to mention that uh, for these socks, I just basically did uh, my own sort of improvised vanilla sock recipe. Um, I think I cast it on 72 stitches and uh, I did my little garter um, heel flap, garter edged heel flap and just a round toe, which is what I really like. And uh, so that's, that's that. So I have another half finished pair of socks. Um, these are the Northern Comfort Socks by Donna Snyder. And uh, Donna is a dyer uh, who's local to me. She's the dyer behind Roots and Rain, uh, Roots and Rain yarn. Uh, she uses natural dyes to make her really beautiful yarn. Um, all of her blends are absolutely gorgeous, um, quite rustic. She sources a lot of, uh, of her yarns are, are Canadian yarns really reasonably priced. I, I highly recommend Donna's yarn. And uh, I had ordered, I'd placed an order with her Etsy shop uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, ordered some some other yarn that I'll show uh, in the next, in an upcoming episode. But she had included, um, very generously included a couple of skeins of her sock yarn for me to try. So this uh, this yarn is her field sock yarn, and it is a blend of, uh, it's mostly uh, Canadian uh, wool with uh, a bit of nylon to kind of add durability. And it is a really, really beautiful rustic sock yarn, sport weight uh, sock yarn. She designed uh, these socks to kind of go with her, um, with her yarn. And uh, these are really great. They're such wonderfully fitting socks. Um, she designed them, she said, to kind of fit into her blendstones. And if you know me, um, you know, I have, <laughs> my feet are pretty much either in Birkenstocks in the summer or m what my husband calls my winter Birkenstocks, which are my blendstones. <laughs> and uh, I really like wearing sort of cozy, thick socks inside my boots. And these ones will perfectly fit the bill. Um, just look at how beautiful this yarn knits up. Uh, I believe that her base yarn is kind of a blend of uh, of paler and darker fiber, uh, wool fiber, and so it adds an incredible amount of depth to uh, to the color, and uh, yeah, just really super happy with how these are turning out. I've just started my second pair, or my second sock. I'm knitting these on three millimeter uh, DPNs. That's something I know I'm really bad about is telling you what needles I'm using, what size needles I'm using. I guess I f it partly feel like, you know, the size of needles I am using is not necessarily gonna be helpful to you because everybody has a, a slightly different gauge, but uh, in any case, uh, I'll try and be better about that, but <laughs> no promises. Uh, but yeah, these are really, really great socks. I highly recommend them. So last time I recorded, I showed you my finished half and half uh, triangle wrap. Uh, it's a pattern by Pearl Soho and um, it is a just a beautiful gigantic square of garter that you can wrap around yourself and uh, feel like you're in a cocoon of deliciousness. <laughs> uh, and I told you about a second one that I was going to be casting on. I actually think I had maybe started the second one when I last recorded, but uh, I certainly had did not have the amount of fabric that I have now. <laughs> this is, uh, of course, in the middle of a row, but <laughs> it is my second half and half uh, triangle wrap. 
and uh, let's see if I can sort of show you the colors that I am using for the second one. So I knit it in, this one is in the yarn that it calls for. It is some just divine yarn. It's a Linen Quill by Pearl Soho. And so the top is um, their dark charcoal color. And uh, then I think it's called pipe or cast iron or something like that and then the second color I'm using is this dark denim color and it's actually showing up lighter than it is it's more of a navy but um, I love this project and I went on and on about it in my last episode so I'm not going to do that again but suffice it to say that this is just the most relaxing project um, you could ask for uh, during a global pandemic. <laughs> it really has been my constant companion during uh, the months and months of uh, lockdown. And um, it's brought me a lot of comfort and a lot of joy to work on my first one and now this one. I really am so happy with the combination of the colors. I, uh, you know, I know that black and blue is maybe not the most exciting uh, combination of colors for half and half wrap. There's some really stunning examples out there of people using the most beautiful, brilliant jewel tones and putting, uh, putting juxtaposing, you know, juicy red with neon orange. And uh, there's been some really gorgeous uh, finished projects out there. However, I wanted something that was going to be uh, throw on every day and uh, this one is definitely going to fit that bill. And I just want to take another moment to just go on and on and be really annoying about how incredibly delicious uh, Linen Quill is. It's just such a beautiful yarn. It's so lofty and so squishy in garter. And uh, just, I love all the flex of the linen and uh, the fuzziness of the wool. It, it's a really beautiful blend that has a lot of body to it. I, It's got a lot of body and it's very light at the same time, so. I am, I'm really just continuing to be completely obsessed. Uh, just to remind you, if you didn't see the other episode, I am doing a, um, a three stitch um, slip stitch edge that ends up looking like um, I-cord. And I am using German short rows to do the, uh, to do the short rows in the, uh, in the pattern. If you want to see a really great tutorial on how to do German short rows, go to uh, the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. I will link it below. Um, yeah, Jackie has filmed a really great tutorial on how to do those German short rows. In my opinion, the best short rows. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave it there. A slightly shorter episode this time, but I do have to get back to work. Um, I hope that wherever you are, uh, you are doing well and that you're staying healthy. And uh, I hope the summer brings a lot of um, joy and uh, connections with your loved ones. And I hope to talk to you soon. I'll leave you on some footage that I took recently when I went out for a hike and got completely devoured by mosquitoes. <laughs> but uh, it was it was beautiful nonetheless. And um, yeah, look forward to catching up with you again soon. All right, take care. Bye. Hi friends! So I thought I would take you along on a beautiful walk in the woods. Um, this walk is actually um, one of my favorite trails. Uh, I actually ski here very often in the winter, but it's also really lovely to walk during the summer. 
So I thought I'd take you along and show you some of the things I see along the way.